Obrigado. Bom, uh, isto é um dos momentos mais interessantes da minha carreira, devo dizer, como jornalista, porque estou na presença de uma das maiores autoridades em um, investimentos, mercado de capitais, um, uh, investimentos em títulos de, de renda fixa, mas também em ações. É o professor Elroy Dimson e eu vou conduzir a conversa com ele em inglês, porque ele não fala português, mas um, vai ter a certeza, aliás, pode ter a certeza que vai ser uma coisa interessante com a qual vai aprender bastante. Professor Dimson, thank you for talking to my right. channel. Thank you. Um, you, are, you are one of the most important authorities when you're talking about the asset management. How do you, how do you define and characterize the present situation? Uh, well, we're in a low return world. Um, it's pretty clear if you analyze history that when uh, risk-free returns are low, the subsequent returns on all assets tend to be lower than average. So it makes us, it, it makes our acti activity in this in this industry very tough um, to make money on a real uh, on a low return world. Uh, it creates challenges both for investors and for investment managers. So for investors, for asset owners, the challenge is that there is going to be less in the future, probably. You know, we, we, <laughs> predictions are always a little bit dangerous, but over the long-term future, uh, the world is going to be more challenged. And uh, what that means is that if there is uh, a lucky period, a period where there's uh, high returns, you should be hanging on to sort of some of that and not spending it. And for investment managers, uh, well, the world is very different. Uh, if you go back uh, to the early parts of the 21st century, uh, then there were uh, relatively high expected returns, and so you could charge fees, which would be a proportion of those returns, yes. and there's still quite a lot left for the investor. Uh, now there's a lot of pressure on fees, partly because everybody knows that uh, there just isn't room to charge really high returns unless the investor is getting something very special in return. Part of it, the industry, especially some, especially some uh, asset managers with whom we talk, they say that, you know, the, the, will, the good times will be back, so they expect int high interest rates to be back. Do you believe that? Oh, I hope that the good times don't come back. If interest rates go up, then, <laughs> then bonds and equities will uh, be likely to fall. I mean, it's almost a certainty that if short-term interest rates go up, long-term interest rates will go up and bond prices will decline. And if bond prices decline markedly, then uh, the prospects don't look good for equities either. So be very careful what you're wishing for. If we're back to the good times, those will be bad. <laughs> uh, and but do, you, do, do you expect this to go on, even if uh, central banks like the ECB and, uh, and the Federal Reserve Bank stop intervening in bond markets? Well, uh, the intervention, if it's happened, has gone on for a long time and would require a kind of conspiracy across many, many different central banks. Uh, and I think we are in, in a, an environment where um, it's not plausible to expect that uh, returns will get to be very large. Uh, and I think central banks are thinking about that. That's why the moves are so gentle in terms of moving interest rates gradually back to a somewhat higher level than the all-time lows that they've uh, experienced. Professor Dimson, there are millions of people literally uh, losing money where, because they are either investing in, uh, in, in deposits or even low-return bonds. So why aren't there more people uh, betting on the stock market? Uh, in terms of equities, of course. Well, I mean, some, some people think that uh, when risk-free investments are giving such a low return that the solution is to invest in equities. If it's because you really need that return, then you're just adding a bit more risk on top of low expected returns. So it makes sense to think about equities if you're a long-term investor. So if you are a 70-year-old pensioner dissatisfied with getting a remarkably low interest rate on some cash that's being saved in the bank, Sticking money into equities doesn't feel uh, very safe either. I mean, they're in a difficult position, but it's not solved by going for uh, assets that give a higher expected return because they have higher risk. 
If, on the other hand, you are a young investor with a long time horizon, there was always a case for going for equities, but I think that case looks stronger than ever, that uh, you, you, know, you, you uh, can uh, have a chance to catch up by working harder or working longer hours uh, if, if, if things don't work out. So, so equities would make sense for younger people. Yeah. Would you say that a folio, for a value investment, a long-term investment would be safe? Um, I think it, if, if an investment is safe in the long term, then the price of that long-term investment, if it's safe, should get higher. If it's higher, then the reward that it offers you will be smaller. So I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with pronouncing anything as being safe. I'm an educationist, so I, mean, I think there are certain sorts of investments that you can make which are relatively safer. So investing in your own education or investing in the education of your family members, well, that's, uh, well, it might be literacy, it might be uh, learning to read, it might be uh, doing a PhD. That will vary with the individual. But I think uh, that that is uh, portable, and uh, it can move with you. So I, I can see values, the cases where the relative attractions will change. And so for some people, um, uh, housing may, may be important, but uh, solving the problem of feeling less wealthy than one would like to, that's not really solved by putting money into riskier assets. Last question. Uh, some of the um, uh, pension management funds, like we the, one, the state fund we have in Portugal, uh, tend to invest only in, on, on, in bonds. Um, given the fact that uh, the returns are very low, uh, would you suggest as, that uh, they diversify their portfolio? Well, I think diversification is important. I think some people are deluded into thinking about uh, asset returns based on the last 10 or 20 or 30 years, and of course bonds have gone well over that period. They've done well because interest rates went down and people therefore were willing to pay a larger price for bonds. That can't happen again. Real interest rates now are round about zero. That is inflation adjusted rates around about zero. Um, they're very unlikely to move towards being minus 10 or minus 15%. So the move from 10 or 15 or 20 percent interest rates to zero gave a big reward. But looking forward, we know what they will offer, um, and and it's low. So it does seem to me to be imprudent to be very heavily exposed to fixed income markets for most investors. Professor Dimson, thank you very much for talking to my Color of Money. Pleasure. Thank my you, pleasure. and good luck. You, your sites uh, <laughs> regard this as being interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bom, então ficamos por aqui na conversa com o professor Dimson. Eu tenho aqui, o meu câmera Mendoza é o Pedro, é, é um dos responsáveis da Casa de Investimentos e é ele que eu vou pedir para, para fechar ali o, o vídeo. Muito obrigado, Pedro. Muito obrigado por estar desse lado.